Mad Max 6, back at Goals de Mecca for Be Built by Brozor this week. What do we got uh, on the program, Eric? So this week, um, I have uh, one of my uh, clients I just started work with a few weeks ago, uh, uh, Mark Durando. He's coming in, I think, man, I think he's coming in only from Bakersfield this morning, which is like a two hour, two and a half hour drive from here. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know it either, but I, he's pretty far away, but he wanted to come in. Uh, he wanted actually... Um, he's got a show in about another eight weeks or so that we've been working towards and um, he's not sure about his his quota turns and his mandatory so he wanted to work on with you know on that stuff with me and go over that stuff and I said hey why don't we bring you out and put you on the show and show what we're doing uh, so he's gonna be here hopefully any minute and we're gonna have him on the show doing a little bit of posing and you know he'll probably talk a little bit about uh, whatever Dave throws at him <laughs> Dave likes to throw questions at my clients and, uh, and then also um, I picked out a couple of uh, questions I got from uh, Ask Merlin Monday uh, this week. Uh, one of them has to do with um, uh, training the rear delts. So I'm gonna show a couple of exercises that I like to use uh, for training the rear delts. And then the other one has to do with uh, losing body fat from the lower stomach. Uh, and that's a, an interesting question. So um, I will uh, shout out to those later who asked these questions when we address them. Uh, and then also today we're going to, uh, Dave and I, are going to train a little delts and hamstrings and abs and uh, you never know, we may sh throw in some, uh, some cool stuff from that as well if I have any interesting movements I want to throw into the mix. So uh, that's what we have on the show today and should be a lot of fun. So I have a question that was presented to me by uh, Mithun Pandi and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Uh, but. I appreciate you, Mathun, because you're always uh, asking great questions and you're always uh, giving great support to me and the show. And I uh, just want to let you know how much I appreciate that. But you asked a question uh, on Ask Merlin Monday, which, you know, a lot of people actually ask this. So it's kind of common. So I figured I'd bring it up now. And it's, you were basically saying how you're, you're losing body fat pretty well from all over your body, but you're finding that the fat on the lower stomach is not really coming off. So you're like, well, you know, what can I do about that? So I wish I could give you some sort of magic formula and just say like, well, this is what you do. You do this exercise and it happens. But the problem is, is that the body generally loses body fat uh, in however it's genetically programmed to do. And it's a little bit different for each one of us. Some of us lose fat faster from the legs, some from the front of the body, some from the back of the body. But definitely one of the hardest areas for men tends to be Lower and women, lower stomach and lower back. So I can't really say to you, you know, do this exercise or eat this food uh, in order to lose the, the lower body fat, uh, the uh, lower stomach fat. What you really need to do is really just continue to keep losing overall body fat and eventually your body will start to tap into those stores. So, I mean, the same principles apply. You're gonna need to do, you know, if you've hit a plateau, you need to do a little bit more cardio. Uh, you know, even if you're just adding five minutes per session uh, to each session per week and you do that each week, uh, you might want to try to raise your protein up a little bit, lower your carbohydrates, uh, just change things a little bit so your diet and your cardio are progressive and slowly but surely your body will start to tap into those areas. But usually what it is is that, you know, even with bodybuilders, you know, when we get down to like say, you know, six or seven percent body fat we'll still have a couple of areas on our body that will still be holding fat even though we're so low in body fat and it really takes those last extra percentage points of body fat until we get down to like three and four percent where those areas finally lose the body fat from. So I'm not saying you have to get that low but you may have to find that your overall body fat has to come down a couple more percent before you start to tar to get to that lower uh, that lower fat area in the lower stomach. But just keep going at it Mithun, and you'll, and you'll get there eventually. Uh, but there's no magic formula for that. I wish I can give you one. Just keep losing body fat, keep at it, and just you know get back to me in a couple weeks and let me know how it's going. So Mark just arrived. Mark, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Eric? Uh, yeah, so this is uh, Mark, how do you say your last name? Durando. Durando. So this is Mark Durando, and uh, he is one of my clients out of Bakersfield, California. And uh, we are getting ready for, what's the name of the show that we're doing? The IMBA World Cup in November 7th, down in San Diego. Down in San Diego. Oh, yeah, that's a big show. So we started working together about how many weeks ago? It's about three weeks ago now. It was about three, three weeks. So we've only ago. been working together about three, three, four weeks mm -hmm. at this point. And uh, Mark had asked me at some point he wanted to come down here and have me, you know, go over posing with him a little bit, work on the mandatories, the quarter turns. And I said, yeah, you know what, why don't you come down and, uh, and jump on the show? Be built by Broza because Dave and I love to have clients on the show, so yes, we brought you yes. down here, and uh, and that's that's what we're doing now. But uh, yeah. so I don't even know how did you even I, I how did you even start how did we even start working together? Who, I was I was going to ask you how yeah. did you find him? So 
I've been working out with a member from VFX Sports Nutrition, uh, Larry Cox, and I brought up the conversation about, I did it at the NGA show last year, my first competition, and after that, I wanted to take my body to the next level, and I asked him, do you know anybody around here in the industry that could perhaps help me out and give me like the right guidance and a good plan? And he brought up Coach. Nice. And so pretty much look on his Instagram, check his website out, and so I did. I did my research a little bit, and then, you know, I was like, all right, I like his stuff, you know. And he was a natural bodybuilder. I was kind of all for that. And, but then I liked how he has a combination of different clients from NPC and the IMBA. So I thought that was a, kind of a neat thing. So yeah. I said, you know what, I'll give him an email, chat, and see what happens. Nice. Kinda, Have you watched any of the videos before? Yeah, I've been actually watching them for the last, like, two weeks. <laughs> really? <laughs> actually, There's a lot now. It, it's a lot. And it was okay, actually... A year's work, almost, right? Oh, or, yeah, yeah. We're least. getting close to a year. Yeah. yeah. Right. Wow. Too. And actually, a lot of my uh, other trainer friends have been watching most of your videos too, and they're all like hooked up to it now. And saying, hey, I told you. I love to hear that. That's awesome. Well, yeah. you're going to be on the show this time, so I'm sure everyone's going to watch. Yeah, yeah and, and absolutely. This is, this is his first time here at the Mecca, so that's wow. cool. And, uh, and I already gave him his workout for today, so after we go through our posing, I'm going to unleash him in the gym. He's going to do uh, a Merlinized uh, back. We'll put it back today? What is it? Yeah, lats, lower back, and calves. Lats, nice. lower back, and calves. I, I know I came up with the formula last night. Sent it off to him, and he's gonna kill it today here at Gold. So let's. Uh, yep. Let's well, have nice some to fun. meet you, Mark. We're glad to have you on the team, and uh, we're gonna see uh, what's going on in there. Absolutely. All right, let's go.
<laughs> People don't understand if you're if you're not a bodybuilder um, how hard it is to pose. You know, like they they they, um, they think that a work. You know, obviously we work out really hard, but I could tell you, and Dave could tell you, he could tell you, going through a session of posing like that is just as hard as a workout. It can like destroy your breathing, cramp up your muscles, and it can make you super duper sore the next day. Which is why when we're getting ready for contests, it's smart to practice your mandatories and your quarter turns for like at least six to eight weeks before you even get to the stage so that once you're on the stage, you have that endurance because you don't know how long your pre is gonna last. So that's why I'm talking now and saying this so he can relax a little bit and we can prepare him for the next round of posing because it is absolutely exhausting. So, and it's also very hot here. It's hot here at the Mecca. I mean, we're already in, the, we're mid-September. It's almost the end of the summer and I think this is the hottest month we've had so far. Yeah. A lot of humidity, so I'm even I'm sweating and I'm not doing anything. They don't believe in air conditioning. There's no air conditioning. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Merlin. Give us give you give us uh, your assessment of. Uh... I'm very very happy with what's happening with Mark's physique uh, at this point in time. He's made a lot of changes in the last three weeks. Um, he's definitely getting a lot harder. His waist is starting to come in. His legs are staying nice and full. A lot of new muscularity is coming through. Um, as far as what we did with the posing today, um, what I did is after he went through the mandatories, we turned off the camera and I really sat with him and I really showed him some of the things that he was doing wrong. And mostly what he was doing wrong was what I see a lot of guys who are who have more of the, the, the smaller, when I say smaller, I don't mean smaller muscle size, but like a smaller clavicles uh, and they're a little bit shorter. They tend to bunch up when they pose. Um, there was even a famous thing in Pumping Iron where Arnold said, don't hide away when you pose and it's true. A lot of the guys who are like, you know, taller and bigger and very wide naturally, they're not afraid to open up when they do their lap spreads and their side chest because they know how wide they are. But the smaller guys, or the, the guys who have the smaller clavicles, they tend to bunch up. So he was bunching up on the front lat spread, he was bunching up on the side chest, uh, especially, uh, and even on his uh, front relaxed pose. And I was basically just teaching him how to bring his shoulders out wider, bring his lats out wider, and actually that makes him look or anybody uh, who, who is, is uh, more narrow in the clavicles, by doing that, you actually bring out the clavicles, you bring out the shoulders, you bring out the lats, and you will look bigger on stage. You know, don't ever be afraid to open up your body a little bit and show it. As long as you have the muscularity and the muscle size, it's gonna look a lot better. So that's what I worked on with him today. So, um, you know, we're gonna probably bring Mark back, you know, whatever, maybe five or six weeks or something like that as it gets closer to the show when he's even, when he's harder and more in shape. And that way I could see more of what's going on with physique and make even more changes in his posing. But remember, when it comes to posing, I mean, sometimes shows are won or lost on posing. You can have two guys who are very, very equal in condition uh, and size and everything like that, but one guy knows how to pose his strengths and weaknesses while the other guy doesn't. And, or also some guy has endurance on stage and he can pose and he can smile and he can do it without shaking and the other guy looks like he's suffering and that can lose a place for you. So yes, yeah, so the presentation, the charisma, and the way you hit the pose is important. So it's good that Mark's working on this. It just goes to show that he's got it in his head to do everything that he can to win this show. So um, so it's great today. You have anything to add? <laughs> no, that was good to work out. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, he's sweating like a pig. I'm sweating just from showing him the You're poses. always sweating though. Yeah, I'm always sweating. <laughs> Well, One thing that Merlin can't do is do a magic spell to stop sweating. I can't wait to see you, like, when we come from the show, to see you dry. I'm going to be so dry that I won't yeah. sweat anymore, but anyway, so yeah, so it was great with Mark, and now Mark's in the train, we're going to train, and uh, like I said, we'll bring him back in a few more weeks, and we'll do this again. Mark, thanks so much for coming today. Uh, I'm glad that you were here, and uh, I can't wait to see you, uh, you know, closer to the show, and then see the big changes, and then, uh, how old are you? You look really young. 26. Oh, man, I killed you. He's a baby. <laughs> All right, thanks, <laughs> thanks for coming today. All this way from Bakersfield. That's, that's dedication, man. All right, thank, thank you so much for having me here. So earlier I promised that I was going to answer a question from Anna T. Now, I'm not going to bother trying to even pronounce your last name because I will destroy it. I don't know why everybody's asking these questions who have these crazy names. But uh, Anna T, I'm going to say, and then, of course, I will give you full credit when this comes out. Uh, but anyway, you asked me uh, on uh, Ask Merlin Monday just a simple question. You know, what's your favorite exercises for the rear delts? And... It's a good question because a lot of people um, actually kind of ignore the real delts. And, uh, you know, if you have well-developed front and side delts and the rears are flat, 
you're not going to have that three-dimensional look, so it's definitely important to hit the rear delts. I have a few exercises. There are a million of them, really, but I have a few exercises that are my go-to exercises for rear delts. First one I'm going to demonstrate is right here, which is uh, one of my favorite, which is the uh, seated rear delt fly machine. Uh, the way that I do it, you'll see as I demonstrate, is I actually put my chest up against the pad and I put my feet back behind me rather than in front of me, which uh, sets my body up in a better position to isolate the rear delts. Another thing you'll notice is that I keep my elbows high so that they're even with my hands throughout the movement. I don't drop my elbows. Uh, this way the rear delts stay fully engaged and isolated. Also, I don't grab the handles this way. You'll see that I grab the handles this way, which just helps me, a personal thing, get a little bit better squeeze in the rear delts and less of a pull from my hand. Uh, and also the final the note that I should make is that whenever you do a rear delt movement, you don't want to pull too far back. If you pull too far back, Behind you, you'll engage the traps, the middle trap area, and that's fine if you're looking to build the middle traps, but if you're looking to isolate the rear delts, you don't want to come back too far. You just want to keep the pressure on the rear delts. So I'm just going to show you a few reps of how I do it right here on the rear delt fly machine. So you see my legs back behind me. Chest up against the pad. Elbows remain high. So as you can see, I only come to about here. I don't try to squeeze back any further once we get the traps. At the bottom, I make sure the tension remains on. I don't let the machine hit at the bottom. So it stays here at the bottom and the elbows remain high even with the hands throughout the movement. Legs are back behind me, chest up against the pad. You don't want to go too heavy on this movement, otherwise you'll lose the isolation in the rear delts. Somewhere around 10 to 12 reps is good in controlled fashion. Always control the negative as well, as we always talk about on the show. And that's uh, the first exercise, and now we'll show you another one coming up next, which will be the seated uh, dumbbell ladder. Okay, so I'm still answering Anna T's question on building the rear delts. I showed you a uh, rear delt fly machine. And now I'm going to do uh, a seated dumbbell bent lateral. This movement can be done standing as well. I prefer the seated version. I just get a better isolation this way than doing the standing version where I feel you could use a little bit more momentum. But you could try either way. For this one, I lean my chest completely down onto my thighs so that I'm completely parallel to the floor. And it's pretty much the same principle as with the machine. Uh, except on this one, I actually do keep my hands this way, not this way. Although you can try lifting them this way as well, just as a variation, just the way I prefer to do it this way. So, starting here. So as you can see, I'm getting a nice wide arc. I'm not doing a row, I'm doing a lateral. If you're doing a row, that means you're going too heavy. Uh, lifting out to the sides, and again, not lifting up so high that I'm engaging the middle traps. I just want to engage the, the rear delts. I'm keeping my chest down on my thighs, and basically my chest remains parallel to the floor. And again, not going too heavy. I might just use, you know, 25, 30 pound dumbbells for this because I want to isolate the rear delts. It's a very small muscle in the back, so you're not looking to build some, you know, it's not like the chest or the legs where you're building a big muscle. It's a small muscle, so don't try to lift too heavy and look to isolate it with a nice uh, movement like this. Uh, and I'm going to show you a couple more movements now using the cables so you can have good variety for your rear delts. Okay, so moving on, Anatee's question about rear delts. I'm going to show you another movement. It's a little bit different because this is not a lateral, it's more of a row. Uh, and this does engage the entire upper back, but it does strongly hit the rear delts as well. Uh, this is pretty much like a, a high pull using a rope. You can also use a, a straight bar. The key is to keep your elbows, uh, elbows up nice and high during the movement and pull with the rear delts and not pull too far back, like I said, which will engage the traps. Uh, but this, you know, it's a different, different kind of movement. Uh, sometimes a good movement to do after a lateral raise. You have a little bit more strength. You're going to use a little bit of the back and the biceps as well. So it's less of an isolation, a little bit more of a compound movement, but it definitely hits the rear delts. And it's, it's something different to do uh, other than just lateral. So I'm going to show you how to do, I do those now. Um, you could do them standing or seated. I'm going to do a standing version right here with this cable here. I'm using a rope. Step back, come back a little bit. Pull it up nice and high. Again, 
again, you're pulling up nice and high. If you're pulling down too low, you're going to get the lats. You don't want to get the lats. You want to engage the rear delts. You want to pull up nice and high. Up to the shoulders, top of the chest. Squeeze here. You don't want to squeeze too far back because then again, you're going to get the traps. Here. Here, everything in line with the shoulder. Exactly. Everything in line. And as you can see, I'm holding the rope like this. This way, this way you can isolate a little bit better than if you were holding it like this. Yeah, yeah. You can also do this movement, like I said, with the straight bar, holding it like this, pulling the mm. same way. Just gives you a slightly different feeling. But again, the principles are the same. You don't want to pull too far back. You want to keep the elbows up nice and high, in line with the shoulders, and just squeeze the rear delts. It's just a great movement to try, aside from the lateral, uh, lateral, bent lateral type movement. I'm going to show you one more movement, though, on a cable that I love to do. Uh, to isolate the rear delts. Okay, Anna, I was gonna show you three exercises, but since I can't pronounce your last name, I'm gonna give you a bonus exercise to make it up to you, a fourth exercise. Uh, this is an exercise uh, which is another cable exercise. Cables, always remember, are good for keeping constant tension on the muscle and allowing you to have a better peak contraction at the top because the, the tension is constant from the cable as opposed to a dumbbell. This is one of my absolute favorites. This is done unilaterally. It's similar to a bent lateral, but it's done on a cable, and I do it in this particular way, as you can see. Setting up right here. If I'm using the right hand, putting the left elbow on the knee, bending over at the waist. Right here to keep the tension on. Now, a mistake that a lot of people make is when they come to the top, they actually twist. That means they're probably going too heavy. You want to keep that body flat to the floor. So shoulders square. So, shoulders are always square. You want to look straight down. You don't want to look ahead. It keeps the pressure off the neck. And again, also, I'm not bringing the, the uh, I'm not bringing the cable up too high. I'm isolating the rear delt and not the track. So we're just going to here. We're not trying to pull all the way up here. Yeah. So right from here, keep the tension on. Squeeze so out. Again, it's another one of those movements you can't go too heavy, otherwise you lose the proper form. It's all about proper form, especially when you're isolating a small mu a muscle like the rear delt. So Anna, give those exercises a try. Uh, do them consistently. Change from workout to workout to get a different stimulus, and I promise you will bring up your rear delts. Boom. Thank you, guys.